Okay, so here we are at the Orthopedic Center in Palm Beach. About to go see Dr. D. Now, Dr. David has been a UFC doctor, been a corner side doctor, or ringside doctor, I should say, cage side doctor for the UFC. Uh, I'm gonna go check him out and uh, see what he can uh, find in this knee. Obviously, this has been a long standing incident. We've had problems with this for about shit. I think my first time I seen the MRI was about eight months ago, and you guys know what happened there. We are in the pandemic era, so I gotta throw this damn mask on. Uh, but we're gonna go check it out, see what's going on, and then uh, try to get our surgery lined up. Let's do it. Yo, shoot me a comment down below if you wanna see the entire surgery. That's what we're probably gonna end up doing. So Dr. Uh, Dr. Abbasi is probably gonna go ahead and do the surgery, and uh, he's gonna get the behind the scenes. So if you wanna see it, just hashtag let's do it on the comments down below. There he is. What's How up? are you doing? I'm all right. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. good to see you, brother. So, so here today for the knee. Yeah. All right. Take me back. What happened? All right. So how did it start? You guys know, but I um I was uh, in jujitsu and we were rolling live. So I went to stand up in guard and he wrapped a De La Hiva and basically wrapped his leg around my knee. And I went to peek out, turn out, but my foot was caught underneath his, his butt pretty much. He trapped my leg in like a more, more of like a modified De La Hiva guard. So my foot was caught in external rotation and then I just internally tore it to the knee and I just heard the pop. Now I didn't do anything. And when did this happen? Man, it was probably like in February maybe. So it was a while back. So with that being said, I was like, all right, let me go get an MRI, but I didn't want to rush to conclusion. I did like the- Did you have an idea? A little bit. Do you have an idea? Yeah, just being around it for so long, right? You know, you know. The dreaded pop. Yep. And I was trying, it was almost one of those things where you like, you try to think it's not that, but I knew deep down that it was. So, you know, I, um, I kind of babied it for maybe three days, not a whole week, and then went back to jiu-jitsu. Did it swell up after this? After so I was looking at the swelling, up. I was looking at bruising, and nothing really was, like, there was no signs of that. So I was like, okay, it was a little bit loose, like it didn't feel stable at all, um, but I didn't get that swelling, so I was okay with that. And I was like, all right, well, maybe it's, you know, one or two things, it could be a strain, hopefully, mm -hmm. or a sprain or whatever. Um, and then I was thinking maybe it could be the meniscus. So I was like, all right, I did all the tests and I was trying to do my own testing. And Who was testing it? Myself. You said you were testing yourself? Myself. Yeah. And what did you, what did uh, you got? Lachman says, I tried to do that okay. one on That's my hard own. to do on yourself. Of course it is, <laughs> okay. I was trying. So what did you come up with after you examined yourself? What did you think? I thought it would be maybe most likely lateral meniscus. Okay. And then maybe partially tore the ACL, which okay. that was my hope. Then I ended up getting the MRI. And then as I was coaching, jumping around, showing guys, you know, dying in the ups and stuff. My wife calls me, you need to get home right now. Your ACL is completely torn. And I was like, ah, yeah, I kind of figured that. So what have you been doing since then? How's the knee been coming along? Or what deficits, what's holding you back with the knee? What have you noticed? What's different on the right knee versus the left knee since this? Well, what's different on the right knee is that I can't rotate and create lateral force. So what happens if you try to do that? It's just unstable okay. and, and it shifts. You feel it shifting. For sure. Yeah. And then it pain, pain starts to right. go um, right shooting down my leg. So that sucks. Um, but I am still able to squat. You guys have been seeing it. Um, squat one in a linear fashion, especially with load, like so like a prowler or a sled. Straight, yeah, straight line. Straight forward is not a problem. Right. And I'm yeah. even still able to do lateral movements, but right. not high velocity level. Like, so what's going on with the knee recently now that you feel like it's time to get it fixed? Oh, well, I'm trying to compete again. Okay. I need to compete. I want to, I want to be able to still do the things that I need to do and not have to worry about it. You know, that's the main thing is like, it's always in the back of my mind. Right. So it stops me from doing the things that I love to do. All right. Well, let's take a look. Let's have you lay back here. Yeah. We'll take a feel here. I like to feel if there's any swelling in the knee. Usually if something is wrong on the knee, It'll swell up like a water balloon, the okay. entire knee. So you might have a little bit of an effusion here. This one, you know, 
this side is dry, but this side may have a little bit of swelling. Let's check our range of motion going up all the way. Good range of motion. Does any of that bother you when we do that? No. Does it feel like it, nothing's getting stuck in the knee? No. Catching? Okay. Let's try our locking test here. That's very loose. I see that tip is really coming forward here. There's no doubt about that one. I like to compare here on the side. Just relax here. That's when you get a nice little stop, mm -hmm. stop, stop. But the other side just keeps going, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you won't see it on this anterior joint. Not, nothing really obvious here. Mm -hmm. Maybe come forward a little bit. Not too bad. Let's just take a feel. Any pain on the inside and the outside part of the knee? Not really. Maybe maybe a little bit on the outside. So we're pressing over that lateral meniscus, that lateral joint line. Let's check the inside part here. Any pain here? No. Is that bothering you at all? No. Checking our meniscus here. Call that Murray sign. Yeah. Let's try it on the outside here. Can it bother you? Not too bad? No. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Sit on up. Let's take a look at these films here. So these are our x rays that we took today. You can see this is your right knee, this is our left knee here. And you know, I'm not seeing any signs of arthritis or anything like that. We want to see nice symmetric joint spaces here. Uh, we want to see some darkness here. It's not that there's nothing there. It's that we have our cartilage and our meniscus yeah, there. Yeah. So those are taking up that, that space here. So I'm not seeing any bone spurs. I'm not seeing, I know you're really kind of, you're doing a lot of activities and stuff. I'm not seeing any wear or tear. These look like good, good knee x-rays. We call this an axillary view. It's basically, we're looking at your knee like this. So we do, you know, this isn't three dimensional. Um, so we're just going to look at some cuts here. This white, at the time of, the, of your MRI, this white here, this was all fluid in the knee. So we would say that you did have an effusion here. And you can see, you know, this is your kneecap centered in the patellofemoral groove here. So we're looking at it at this orientation. You, now we're looking at it straight on like this, and it's taking cuts like this way. Okay. So it's going from front to back. This is medial on the inside part of the knee. This is the outside part of the knee here. So again, we can see that effusion here, that swelling that you had in the knee. Now we're gonna start looking from the inside and taking cuts this way. And that ACL is really gonna be in profile on this one. This is your ACL. It, it, you see how it's all white? It should be nice and dark. Like, it should be nice. It should be really nice and dark. But it's like really wavy. It's really edematous. Okay. Combined with the fact that it's so your knee is so loose on that locking exam, I mean, it's obviously it's very obviously torn. You know, this MRI was taken um, actually December thirty first. Damn, that was that long ago. It was like eight months ago. <laughs> so you've really been holding on. Yeah, man. So you know, this this MRI represents one point in time. Yeah. Um, so there's a chance That's that you know. At this time, you know, you had an ACL tear, you, your meniscus looked healthy. Is it possible you've torn some meniscus? Is it possible you've dinged some cartilage since the MRI? It is. Like we talked about before, you know, not having an ACL is kind of like you're, you're riding around in a car without a seatbelt. So that it prevents the tibia from coming forward too much, you know, that, which is basically what that Lachman exam shows. So what happens when your knee is moving in a way that it shouldn't is you start you can start dinging other structures. So, you know, our options at this point, I, I think with what your goals are and what you want to do, certainly we're, we'd be talking about ACL reconstruction. Yeah. Um, so basically we're taking tissue from somewhere else to make a new ACL. And we call it an ACL reconstruction versus an ACL repair. A repair is when we sew something back together. Mm -hmm. And we know that ACL repairs um, for this type of injury would not, it would not do well. And so, you know, we talked a little bit about what types of grafts that we would use. You know, some of these options include taking your bone from the kneecap and then a little plug of bone from the tibia. We call that a uh, patellar bone tendon bone. Mm -hmm. That's probably the gold standard, the tried and true mm -hmm. uh, ACL reconstruction. For you, in your situation, what, what I historically have done for a very elite ath athlete would be the bone patellar tendon bone, yeah. the bone tendon bone. Right. Um, the advantages of that is, you know, it's tried and true. Um, because we have those bone plugs, mm -hmm. when we do recreate and reconstruct the new cell, when I'm when I'm making the hole arthroscopically, we put in the bone plug. We're immediately fixing bone to bone, so we can get bone to bone healing. So it goes a little bit quicker, yeah. maybe a little bit more reliable, yeah. maybe a little bit stronger. I guess what's the recovery rate? Time, I should say. Time. Okay, so that's a little bit controversial, right? Yep. So if we're talking, you know, the day that we do the operation till the oh, day... We're talking about me, Doc. We're talking, talking about, about me. That's what everybody thinks, right? It's like everybody's <laughs> like, well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm what's wrong. But the 
the thing is, you, we can't rush the biology, right? right? The biology, there's nothing you can do. It doesn't matter how tough you are. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's about that biology. So, so I would say from the date of surgery to the, we release you into the octagon, you know, at a minimum, six months. If I could try to really hold you back, I, I feel safer according to the most recent literature, nine months. Yeah. That being said, whenever I do an, an ACL surgery, I mean, I'm, I'm very aggressive about repairing meniscus. I've gone in on ACLs. I have everything ready to go. If we do the operation, so it'd be an outpatient surgery. Yeah. So again, we would be taking, you know, the central third here, and you're asleep for all this, so you don't feel me. This don't work, okay? We take the central third of the patellar tendon, and basically can reconstruct it into an ACL. Two poke holes here. If we have to do any meniscal stuff, maybe I make a couple more poke holes, and then you know you'd have an incision here, obviously from taking that incision here in the front of the knee. You'd have another incision here for our, my bone tunnel that I have to make to weave yeah. that to, to reconstruct the new ACL. You come in, we do the operation, you go home the same day, yeah. um, you wake up in a knee brace. If we just do the ACL without any you know, meniscal repairs, I let you start walking on it immediately in the knee brace. Nice. Okay. Sure. And we want to start physical therapy as well two to three days after surgery. Yeah. Start getting the quads woken back up. Oh, yeah. Know, yeah. Start getting the knee range of motion back, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. If we have to do a meniscus repair, then we may limit the first four weeks. Mm -hmm. But basically, we're trying to reconstruct this, this ACL. We'd look at both of these meniscus. We want to preserve those if at all possible, because those act as shock absorbers sure. to the knee. Um, what questions do you have for me? I mean, the only ones that I had was, you know, what do you think as far as, I know that we're gonna go patella. Yeah, you know, that was that's what thing. I would recommend. That's, that's the one thing that I was leaning towards anyways, as yeah. opposed to hamstring yeah. Yeah. and even like a cadaver. Yeah. 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 This surgery probably takes me, you know, 60 or you know, 60 minutes to 120, you know, one to two hours. Okay. If I have to do meniscus, you know, maybe a little bit more. Um, but you might be there, you know, before surgery, yeah. that, that maybe half the day. I do like so. a pre uh, prep my surgery. So. Yeah, they'll, you, you know, with today, you'll get COVID tested. Yeah. Um, if you have any medical conditions or anything, we should know by taking medications. No. Yeah, so that, I don't think you need any, you know, medical clearance or anything. So if you're healthy, we should be able to get this going soon. All right, cool. Thank All you. right, you bet. It's my pleasure. All right, brother. We'll get you fixed. Let's do this.